You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Daniel Sinner with today's discussion. Girls' schools are going out of fashion, according to the editor of the Good Schools Guide. Lord Lucas says parents fear single-sex schools are no longer the best way to prepare their daughters for what he calls the world of men, marriage and career. He also says pupils themselves are rejecting the reserved surroundings of single-sex education in favour of mixed classrooms. But his comments have been condemned by headmistresses. The head of St Mary's School in Wiltshire says his comments are old-fashioned and come from the 19th century. Joining me to discuss single-sex education is Alan Smithers, Director of the Centre for Education and Employment Research at the University of Buckingham. Jeanette Wallace is Senior Editor of the Good Schools Guide and Louise Robinson is Headmistress of Merchant Taylor's Girls' School and the President of the Girls' School Association. I'm going to start with you, Alan. Lord Lucas says single-sex girls' schools are going out of fashion um, and he's estimated that we could lose a quarter of their pupils over the next 20 years. Do you agree? The number of uh, single-sex schools is uh, declining, particularly girls' schools. The reasons are actually extrinsic to the quality of the education they provide. They tend to be financial reasons, Boys' schools have been taking girls and have been growing. So it's no reflection on the quality of the education that's offered in girls' schools that there are now fewer of them. Louise Robinson, headmistress of Merchant Taylor's Girls' School, would you agree with what Alan was saying? Absolutely. It is no reflection on the quality of the girls' schools. It's the fact that economic measures have driven some boys' schools to go co-educational and therefore... There's a choice then that girls and their parents have to make between what they want for their, their, their education. And unfortunately, we have to also recognise that it's location just as much as anything else. And a parent will look around at their location to see the best school that's around them for their child, whether it is male or female. And if they go into a school and find that it's it's what they want, then they, that's what will happen. But it is economics that, that's driving the change. Girls' schools have a unique selling point. You know, we are there to provide education for girls, which we, will take them beyond what uh, Sir Ralph Lucas was saying about um, preparing them for men, marriage and career. I think it's more a case of saying to them they can do anything and be anything in the world of work when they leave school. Jeanette Wallace, Senior Editor of the Good Schools Guide. What are your thoughts? Gosh, I agree with both of the previous speakers <laughs> in many ways. Um, there's no doubt that the, the number of, of families that come to the Good Schools Guide asking for girls' schools it has been going down. Um, but at the same time, the, I'd say that the, the biggest category of parents is not necessarily ones that say they want a co-ed school. It's parents who say they want a good school. And, you know, whether it's co-ed or whether it's girls only or boys only isn't always or isn't even often the first priority. So even if they do come into it looking for a co-ed school, and I, th I think that's partly economics, I think it's partly changes in society and, and you know, in all, all walks of life. But oftentimes, at the end of the day, what they really want is, is, is a school they feel will suit their child, where they will thrive and do well. Louise Robinson, your headmistress of Merchant Taylor's Girls' School, why would someone come to a single-sex girls' school rather than co-education? Because if you come into my school and see what it offers, the ethos that, that's within the school, you would want that for your daughter. Why, uh, what is it that's so good about your ethos in your school? It's, it's the way that the children are taught. It's the thoughts behind the way the teachers behave. It's the offers that we give them in terms of extracurricular. When, when a school is co-ed, you have to divide your provision for sports, for example, whereas all my sport is generated for girls and girls' achievements. Similarly, my staff teach in a particular way that encourages girls to learn, encourages girls to perform better. The current edu educational system we all know is geared up to be more suitable for girls because girls prefer to do things gradually. They like feedback so that they can improve it. Whereas we know that boys, and obviously there's an 80-20 rule here and I am generalising, whereas boys would prefer to do the one exam at the end and have it over and done with over a short period of time. 
So we are actually teaching in a manner that girls prefer. And the teachers who come in from co-ed schools into my school actually have to change the way they teach to accommodate those needs of those particular girls. Do you think your school is preparing girls for the world of men, marriage and career? I would hope that I would be talking about I'm preparing girls to face the world and be able to do anything they want to do, which is what Christine O'Done said in The Telegraph after she read about Ralph Lucas's comments. She went to a girls' school and she said she left knowing that she could be the editor of a newspaper, she could run a world bank, she could go um, and win world medals because it was all intrinsically there, not overt so much as covert, but it, the hidden message is that when you go to a girls' school, you are given opportunities for leadership, you're taking um, advantage of everything that's available to you, and you go out believing you can do anything. It's not a case of a world of men, marriage or career. It's a case of, I can do anything I want to. Um, Alan Smith is Director of the Centre for Education and Employment Research at the University of Buckingham. You've done a lot of research into this. Would you agree that a, a single-sex school do, has all the benefits that Louise was mentioning? Well, I'd agree with Louise about her school, and I've actually presented the prizes there on occasion. Um, but it isn't a matter of single-sex schools versus co-educational schools. It depends very much on the characteristics of the person. I have two daughters and they happened to start at a single-sex school because it was the nearest school, and one loved it. The other uh, hated it, and I moved it to a co-educational school. Passionate claims are made on behalf of both single-sex schools and co-educational schools. Those claims have been most passionate when the school category has been in the minority. So we began with single-sex schools, and co-educational schools had to fight for their place. And all sorts of things were claimed for them as being closer to real life and easier to adjust for the future. Which have more benefits for, children, for a child's education? Well, if you look at the research, and this is the point I was going on to make, there aren't consistent differences for all young people at all periods. Advantages are claimed for single-sex schools and they do show up on some occasions, but not all occasions. Advantages like adjustment to the mixed world of university are claimed for co-educational schools. And again, it depends very much on the person, not on the particular kind of school they, they've gone to. Now, it may be there are advantages to co-educational schools or single-sex schools that we're not measuring. The things we can measure are exam results, we can measure the popularity of the school, we can measure ease of adjustment to university, but we may not be putting our finger on the essential thing. But as far as we have evidence, there are no consistent findings which say that one is better than the other. A reminder that you're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Daniel Sinner with today's discussion on single-sex education. Joining me to discuss single-sex education is Alan Smithers, Director of the Centre for Education and Employment Research at the University of Buckingham. Jeanette Wallace is Senior Editor of the Good Schools Guide and Louise Robinson is Headmistress of Merchant Taylor's Girls' School and the President of the Girls' School Association. Jeanette Wallace, the Senior Editor of the Good Schools Guide. Parents that are coming to your guide for um, assistance in getting their, their children the best education, what are their feelings behind um, going for a single-sex school rather than um, a co-educational school? Well, first of all, I would just mention um, a little bit of a of research or analysis that we did a couple of years ago. Um, and like all research on the subject, it certainly isn't conclusive, but we looked at the value-added scores of girls that were going to... Uh, it was all state schools and they were all comprehensive schools, so no grammars or, or selective schools. And we found that the girls at girls-only schools had better value-added scores, so they were making more progress between the age of 11 and 16 than their peers at co-ed schools. Um, and we found this was most um, profound in the lowest 
achieving ability ranges. So the girls that came in really struggling at the age of 11 to senior school, they made more progress uh, by the time they were 16 than you'd expect. Now, there could be, re you know, there could be many reasons for that. It could be that the families that send their, their daughters to girls-only schools are more ambitious academically. It could be uh, uh, that, that the girls' schools gave them more support. There's, you know, so it doesn't explain the results. What about the flip but it's side? Still what about interesting. boys of that age? Boys also made slightly more progress in boys only schools, but it was it was it was almost, you know, it was very minimal, but it was a little bit. Whereas the girls it was it was really significant. The president elect of the Girls Schools Association um, said that parents want an environment where their girls are treated as individuals and not as objects. Is that something that really happens in coeducational schools? That they're treated as objects? As objects and not individuals. Oh, certainly by their peers they can be. Certainly they can be. Surely everyone is treated the same. Why would well, girls specifically be treated as objects in a co-educational Well, if we're talking about independent schools, the vast majority of the co-ed schools are, prim are mainly boys. So there'll be 60% boys, um, perhaps more, 40% girls. And, um, you know, it, 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 sometimes girls coming into a, a heavily, you know, male-dominated um, environment can have, a, can have a rough time. I mean, there was a, actually an article in the, in the paper today saying that the Girl Guides had done some research and it was showing that they, 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 girls felt that if they were pretty, they could get away with more at school. That was a quote from one of the girls. So that, that, that their looks mattered in how well they were going to do at school. Now, I don't think you would find that attitude at a girls-only school. Louise Robinson? Absolutely, you wouldn't. When I've talked to my girls about role models, they will be able to quote female role models. Whereas, yes, I saw the research from the Girl Guides, and they're talking about not being able to portray themselves as intelligent women in the world of, that we see at the moment on the television and media. Why is that? What is their fear? You, the president-elect, the lady that's going to be taking over from you... Hillary she, French. Hillary French, indeed. Um, she said that, um, that girls are scared that they will come across cleverer than the boys or their boyfriend in the classroom. In what? a co-ed school? Mm. Yes, that, w that would be quite true. And certainly, uh, from my own personal experience, I would say that I felt that, that you, um, you try to hide your intelligence when you're in a mixed school and that's the way I I grew up I, I know that's anecdotal um, but when I go to my girls and talk about um, political leaders in the world we can use female political leaders as examples and Angela Merkel's a wonderful example of someone with a fantastic brain but you get people commenting on her dress which is so inappropriate. Sure Alan you wanted to say something. Just to be clear girls do do better in the exams in England at age 16 whichever type of school they're in. So there's no question of them hiding their light under a bushel. Now, if you compare like with like, if you take, say, the selective schools in this country, the grammar schools, now about 60 of them are girls' schools, about 60 of them are boys' schools, and about 45 of them are mixed. If you compare those schools you find that the single-sex girls' schools do best in the examinations at 16. The boys' schools do worse, and the co-educational schools come exactly in between. So there is hardly any impact on the teaching of boys and girls together or separately on their examination results at 16. What tends to happen, I think, is that whether the school has just boys, just girls, or is mixed, is a very obvious feature of the school. And there are some really excellent girls' schools, really excellent boys' schools, really excellent co-educational schools. But people tend to attribute their excellence to their gender mix, whereas in fact it's down to the ability of the young people there, the parental support, and overlying all this is the fact that girls do better in the examinations at 16 anyway. We're seeing it, the number of people turning to um, single-sex girls' schools going down. I think the, the annual census here, uh, members of the Girls' Schools Association, they've seen uh, a drop in just over um, a thousand mm. schools. If people are going for the better schools that aren't necessarily single-sex, could we see a, more, a bigger uptake of co-educational schools? Well, we've got a switch to co-educational schools uh, in both the state and the independent sector, really for extrinsic reasons. In the state sector, the single-sex schools got swept away in the move to comprehensive schools. 
uh, if selection by ability wasn't appropriate, selection by gender wasn't either. In the independent sector, it's been commercial pressures, really, that have caused some schools to expand and become co-educational. So those are extrinsic things. I think it's a great pity that we have so few single-sex schools now for girls. And I think there may well be cultural pressures. Why is it a pity? Well, more parents, I think, for cultural and social reasons, perhaps want their children to go to single-sex schools. Uh, What Janet was saying about there being higher degrees of value added in some single-sex schools among children from relatively poor backgrounds, I think may be related to the number of Muslim families that there are now in this country. And they want uh, single-sex education, not for the quality of the education, but for cultural reasons. So I think what we want is a great variety of good schools so that parents who know their children best can find the one that's most appropriate for them. Jeanette Wallace, Senior Editor of the Girls' Schools Guide, if you've got a... If you've got, um a a co-educational school and a single sex school both say exactly the same on the league tables which would you recommend a parent to go for go visit the schools go visit the schools and decide for yourself um you will get a vibe when you're there um think about the the everyday factors can you have both children at the school um you know it, it convenience of, of getting to the school uh, all of those things but I mean if they're both doing the same and they're both just as close to you go visit the schools and, and make your own decision okay you visit the schools they <laughs> both seem very good read the good schools guide see what we had to say about it all right you're trying to skip out of that one um, Louise Robinson what would you say uh, come to the girls school obviously I, I'm passionately for girls schools but I we have to recognize that a good school is a good school and um, it will do your child Uh, um, a good service if it's a good school. But you say go for the single sex school? I believe it's appropriate for the child, what's appropriate for the child. Why should someone go to a single sex school then? Why why would you say, apart from the fact that you run a a girls school? Because all the resources are there for that particular child's needs. Uh, As Jeanette said, you know, I have a dance studio, the boys school has a a rugby playing field. Um, I have the teachers who know how to look after children, uh, girls, when they are going through those p- years of puberty and they need more help because girls do go through huge emotional changes in that period from 11 to 18 just because of hormones. A reminder that you're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Daniel Sinner with today's discussion on single sex education. Joining me to discuss single-sex education is Alan Smithers, Director of the Centre for Education and Employment Research at the University of Buckingham. Jeanette Wallace is Senior Editor of the Good Schools Guide and Louise Robinson is Headmistress of Merchant Taylor's Girls' School and the President of the Girls' School Association. I'm going to come back to uh, the way that you tailor your education for uh, girls uh, in a second. I want to go to Alan first. In the scenario which I've uh, which I've brought up, would be the better choice of education if they're both on the same uh, par on league tables. You've visited the schools. You're very happy with both. In those circumstances, I'd spin a coin. But, um, <laughs> I mean, any parent choosing a school will look for the best possible school for their son or daughter. But it could possibly exist where you do have a league table where both are in a very similar yeah position on the league table? Well, I wouldn't choose on the basis of whether it was single sex or co-educational. Other than I like the feel of the school, I'd go on my instincts. So parents need to respond to the needs of their children and parents are in the best possible position to understand what their children can do, what they want to do with their life, how, in what circumstances they're likely to thrive. Um, Louise Robinson, uh, as a girls' school um, headmistress, you said that you tailor um, the way that you look after the girls in terms of their education. Uh, um, How do you tailor it for them compared to a boys' school? It's more a case of technique and the way you have to think about a girl thinks. Uh, It's been proved, for example, by looking at the way um, the eye moves, that when a girl faces a multiple choice question, and of course we're going back to the 80-20 percentage of generalisation, when a girl looks at a multiple choice question, she'll look at A, then she'll study B, C, D and E, and she'll dismiss two, and then she'll spend a good 15 minutes trying to work out B, C and D, and the variety of them, and spend waste far too much time on it. Whereas instinctively, she probably knew the answer, but she will 
worry about the variation there. Whereas a boy will go, I know the answer to this, it's C, move on. And therefore, that girl has then wasted her time when she should have been doing the next question or, or go on to the bit that, that, that's like the essay section of a paper. So therefore, you have to show a, chi a, a girl how to get over that hesitation in the way she answers the question. And you have to do that in every single subject. Girls prefer to have a discussion in a lesson, whereas a boy would much rather just do. And again, I'm talking generalisations here. There are girls who won't and there are boys that would prefer the discussion basis. Girls are very happy in language lessons to have the conversations between themselves, knowing they're going to make mistakes when there are girls in the room only. We've shown that when there are boys in the room, they won't speak. You know, I've had girls who've joined me from co-educational schools who've said they've been in A-level language classes and haven't spoken for six months because they were just ridiculed when they made a mistake in the first few instances. So it's the way the teachers present the lessons, it's the way they encourage them to perform that we think that we've got the best um, processes in place to make sure that girls do achieve. You mentioned before that um, you probably wouldn't put so much emphasis on looking at having a rugby pitch that's pristine. Is there anything else that you would say you focus more on as a girls school than, I'll go for subjects first, um, than boys schools would do? Because that's bringing up a worry here of uh, Lord Lucas who said it's time to liberate girls to make it okay to choose physics or electronics. Is that a worry that girls actually have? No, not in a girls school, definitely not. Um, because uh, we have electronics and physics and m the, the question is, and I know um, Alan has has said and has proved other issues of, around this, mm -hmm. but clearly in a girls' school there is no question that the, a girl can choose any subject without feeling that she shouldn't be doing physics or electronics. Though clearly, and I, I do have to say this, we have more facilities for home economics, uh, needlework, um, the art side of um, art and design tends to go towards the more um, creative whereas the, in the boys school that's my brother's school down the road theirs is more towards the metalwork side and and and, and that's just the feature of um, girls choice and preferences is that a good thing though are we pushing are we pushing people into stereotypes girls and boys into stereotypes by putting more provision onto certain things we might consider girly it's more a case of focusing the resources, the, the, where the resources are needed. So if more girls chose to do electronics, then we would put more resources into electronics at the school. Do you find that more girls are taking up subjects that they might not do in co-educational schools, One, well, ones they might brand boys' subjects? They, at girls' schools, they might have a, a better opportunity to take up those, those ones they might be scared of. I think so, but I do know that, that evidence has proved that differently. We believe that in our school and in a lot of the girls' schools that girls do choose the sciences, maths, without question about it being a stereotypical subject. OK, we'll go to the evidence. And, <laughs> Alan, what, what is it that you found? What research have you suggested? Well, one of the arguments that's strongly put forward for um, girls' schools is that girls in them are much more likely to do the physical sciences and go on to do engineering than they would if they'd been in a co-educational school. And if you look at the raw results of schools, that is the case. But in the case of Louise's school, it's very difficult to get in. So the girls there are of very high ability. In some of the co-educational schools, there is a much greater spread of ability. So the actual subject choices of co-educational and single-sex schools related very much to the ability of the intakes. The argument that's put forward by girls' schools is that boys put girls off these subjects. They dominate the conversations with teachers and so on. If this were true, girls wouldn't be starring in the examinations at 16. They are not being put down by being in co-educational schools, they're doing just as well in those co-educational schools overall 
as they are in the single-sex schools. Uh, Jeanette? No, I was just going to say that they're doing as well, but, but in fewer numbers. Mm. So they are, there are many more girls who are studying physics and maths, um, comparatively speaking, in girls-only schools. I think there's a lot of scope for there being more. I think there still is the case that at, at a girls-only school, I mean, we go to visit schools and I'll chat with the pupils, and you know, so many times, they, 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 they even within the girls-only schools, um, just feel physics and maths is just no way. A, a career in engineering is just not something they could possibly uh, think of. So I think that is something that, although the girls' schools are doing a good job, they could definitely do better uh, in, in that particular area. Do you think there's a worry by separating girls and boys in schools they don't get to mix? That seems, that's the key thing that you miss in single-sex schools. I, I don't think that's a problem at all nowadays. You know, Even the most remote, boarding, girls-only school convent background will have a, a lot of interchange with boys schools they will, will um, not just social events but also academic exchanges oftentimes the schools will have a an a-level subject um, taught with a boys school um, so no, that of all the uh, arguments against single-sex schooling i think that is just one that doesn't really hold up i mean i, I would just say also on the subject of you know whether they go for for subjects that are uh, dominated by the opposite sex i mean we see the same thing in boys only schools boys um doing at a boys only school doing dance doing english literature doing um languages in greater numbers so it works for them too that they they whether it's embarrassment at co-ed schools or, or whether it's dominated those fields by girls i can't say but certainly they do go for them in bigger numbers of boys only schools louise robinson what provisions do you have for girls to make sure they do mix with boys um we do an awful lot of activities as Jeanette said, we, we actively promote joint drama activities. We have a joint um, lecture series. We actively promote um, extracurricular functions so that girls and boys have that social mix. We run our cadet force, Duke of Edinburgh, all as a mixed provision after school, so outside the classroom, but we give the girls and the boys the chance to have that social mix. And, and the majority of my parents will have a boy at the boys' school. Um, it's a case of that we've presented the best of both worlds. Well, I was just going to say that uh, it can be a pity that you don't have both sexes in the same class for subjects like English literature, because I think boys and girls read books in different ways and they have different kinds of experiences to share. But this isn't long lasting. I mean, when I was at university, the mythology was that if you found a girl from a girls' school, then this was really <laughs> a good basis for friendship in, a, in the university environment. And in one of our projects, we examined the possibility that girls from single-sex schools cut loose when they got to university. But that wasn't the case. Uh, it depended very much on the girl. And girls from single-sex schools and girls from co-educational schools adjusted to about the same extent, with the same wide variation between them. Just, Jeanette, you wanted to say something. Um, just to say that, that, that what comes out of all this to me is the importance of choice. And isn't it a great thing that in some areas in this country there really is that choice for parents? Um, and I think even the strongest foes of single-sex schooling would, would, would feel it was a bit sad if there were no longer any uh, girls-only or boys-only schools in, in the UK. So, so um, you know, long may that choice continue. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you to my guest, Alan Smithers, Director of the Centre for Education and Employment Research at the University of Buckingham. Jeanette Wallace is Senior Editor of the Good Schools Guide, and Louise Robinson is Headmistress of Merchant Taylor's Girls' School and the President of the Girls' School Association.